when Jesus was speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brothers appeared outside, wishing to speak with him. Someone told him, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside, asking to speak with you. But he said in reply to the one who told them, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand towards his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of my heavenly Father is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Although it is not the main reason of this Gospel, although whenever it is read, it must always be explained, it must always be done, because some people may have never heard the explanation and others may have doubts because Protestants have attacked them or said that the Virgin Mary had other children. The word brothers in Aramaic or Hebrew, which was a very ancient language, was a word that was used both with brothers, son of the same father and the same mother, and with half-brothers, that word did not exist, half-brothers, that is, children of the same father, but not of the same mother, or the other way around, as with the first cousins of those who were children of a brother or sister of the father or mother. Therefore, the word siblings could be used interchangeably for a brother, a stepbrother, or a first cousin, Therefore, it does not mean that Jesus had siblings who were children of the Virgin Mary. Furthermore, in the Eastern tradition of the Church, it was always considered that Saint Joseph, when he married our mother, the Saint Joseph was all a widow, and therefore had children from a previous marriage. Those children of St. Joseph would not be children of the Virgin Mary. Children of the Virgin was only our Lord Jesus Christ. That in the Eastern tradition, the Western tradition, that of the Latin Church, did not see it that way. It was always said that St. Joseph was a young man who had married the Virgin Mary and who had lived in Chester. They had not other children but Jesus, who was conceived by the works of the Holy Spirit. However, the word brother, I repeat, does not necessarily mean brother, son of a common father and mother. Besides, if Jesus had had brothers and sisters, if Jesus had brothers, in no way could he have left his mother in the care of a stranger to the family as was the case of St. John the Evangelist, who was there at the foot of the cross, who was also an adolescent at that time. If Jesus had had brothers, the Virgin Mary should have stayed with them. It was an exonerable law that no one could fail to complete, comply with that in Israel, a law according to which the elders were cared for a very well received in the house of the children when the children was already married. Well, this is something that must always be clarified when reading this gospel. If brothers means if brothers need to have clarity and very time especially because it simply matters to understand. But as Protestants attack a lot on this point, I think it's a good always to have the arguments. The important thing in this gospel is the answer that Jesus gives. Who are my mother and my brothers and my sisters? The Lord asks the question, immediately gives an answer, those who do my father's will, those are my brother and sister and mother. How easy or how difficult depending on how you look at it, but how easy because fraternity and maternity or paternity is linked to blood. You can neither live or not assume it. In any case, you can have an adoptive filiation, which you have by baptism. 
but the affiliation or fraternity is blood. You can be a bad son, you can be a bad father, you can be a bad brother, but you are a son, father or mother, brother. It is like this, even if you are a bad son, you are a son, even if you are a bad brother, you are a brother. These are the things of the inevitable blood. Jesus is opening fraternity and maternity or paternity. He's opening it to all, not according to the blood, but according to the fulfillment of God's will. Do you want to be Jesus' brother? This is the question. Moreover, do you want to be Jesus' mother? Jesus needs his mother and his brothers and his friends. Do you want to be Jesus' mother? What that the Lord is doing is asking each one of us this question. Do you want to be Jesus' mother? Do you want to be my mother? Jesus says it to us. Do you want to be my mother? Do you want to be my brother? Do you want to? He has already told what you have to do. Do you want to be my mother? Do God's will. God's will is simply to understand, accept, when you are in discernment about your vocation. Those are the moments, more delicate moments, but in the end, you have to listen to the voice of God in your heart, and you understand the will of God. It is simple to understand. Maybe it is not as simple to feel, feel it, but it is simple to understand. What does God want from me? What does God want from each one of us? Because He will not want the same thing from everyone, and at the same time, He does. For example, for everyone, He wants us to do good and avoid evil. He wants us all to love. He wants for all, all of us, to fulfill our obligations. Everyone's. What happens is that everyone's obligations are different. The obligations that a marriage person has to fulfill is not the same as the single person. The obligations that a priest has to fulfill is not the same as the lay person, or the duty of a bishop has to fulfill is not the same as the cloister monk, but the Lord addresses the question to everyone. You are a man, you are a woman, you are a young man, you are an old man, you are a lay man, you are a priest, a bishop, a pope, you are the pope, you are a nun, you are a monk, do you want to be my brother? Do you want to be my mother? Do God's will, that is to say, start by fulfilling your obligations. What are your obligations? What are the obligations of your condition? For example, I know my, I know what my obligations are in my condition. And he who has children should know what his obligations are. You are a professional. You know what the, your obligations are. Therefore, to be Jesus' mother, what you have to begin by doing is to fulfill your duties, your professional duties, your duties to your country, your duties to your family, or your duties to the church. It is easy to understand. Sometimes it is not easy to put it into practice. And then, once you have to fulfill your duties, go up one step farther, because your duties, the fulfillment or your obligations, in the minimum, it is only the beginning, a beginning that must be fulfilled to move on to the next stage, but it is in the beginning. Do you have already fulfilled your obligations? Yes. Well, now look at Jesus. What did Jesus do? Loved as He loved us. He has commanded us. What did Jesus do? What would Jesus do in your place? You have already done the minimum. Now, what could Jesus do in your place? Hope, strive for the maximum. That is, do not be satisfied with not doing evil, but do good, do as much good as possible. You have already given everything you had to keep according to your duties. Well, but there is something you can do beyond your obligations. Do it. Do all the good you can. Fulfill your duties. And do all the good you can do. Don't do evil. Do good and fulfill what, what God wants from you. It is wonderful because it is the way you can be 
Jesus' brother, the brothers he needs, Jesus' mother, Jesus is in heaven with his mother, but Jesus is also here on earth. He is in the Eucharist, and he needs us. He is in those who suffered, and he needs us. Let us fulfill our obligations and do so as much as good as possible. Amen.